What's up guys, I'm James, and welcome back to The Great Gambino Watch Reviews. Today we are checking out a very special piece that was lent out to me by Matt Zinsky from Tips and Watches. Matt has combined his background in architecture with his enthusiasm for watches to create this company and make something to represent his watch journey and everything it has led him to desire in watches. The name itself, Tipsim, comes from the words typical and similar within the architectural industry. Tipsim is a newer micro brand with a vintage feel and focus on quality and aesthetics, starting with tool watches. My uncle Mark lives in Seattle and ran into Matt at a watch boutique and they arranged for me to check out and review this demo piece. So thank you to both of them for giving me a chance to look at the 200M here on my channel. Packed in the box with the piece is a microfiber cloth. Underneath, you will notice the inside is lined with a felt-like material. If you pull the tab lifting the upper compartment, you will find the extra links and owner's instruction manual. Keep in mind that this is a demo model, but this one does have polywatch included, which comes in handy for pieces that have vintage style crystal. The watch itself is held firmly on a blue pillow style holster that has a shape very similar to what you would find with a Rolex Submariner's packaging. But let's go ahead and take a closer look at the piece. When first handling this watch and looking it over, I can tell right away that it is a true passion piece. With the bezel and handset, it slightly reminds me of a 50 fathom diver, which makes sense because this piece is inspired by mid 20th century divers in terms of dimensions, functionality, and style. The particular model we are looking at comes in two versions. The 200MC, which is a certified chronometer, boasts a stunning negative relief gold gilt dial and retails for around $1,799 at the time of making this video. We also have the 200M model you see here, which while similar, does not have the certification and differs with a silver negative relief gilt dial that keeps it interesting. You will save some money with this version not being certified as it comes in at $1,199 at the time of filming. Real quick, I'll give you the measurements. We have a case width of 39 millimeter, but 41 with the bezel. Lug to lug is 47.5 millimeter. If you want to change out the band, it will be 20 millimeters. And we have a case thickness of 12.7 millimeters. The triple gasket screw down crown is stamped with the company logo. The symbol is a reference marker in architectural drawings, which is a circle with a slash through it. When screwed down, it offers 200 meters of water resistance. Let's go ahead and hear what that winding function sounds like. The bezel is the part of the watch that really gives me that 50 fathoms feel with that vintage rounded off bubble effect created by the acrylic crystal coating. In addition, all of the numerals are treated with loom, but we will take a look at that later. As far as functionality, it rotates with a unidirectional 120 clicks. In my experience, the bezel action is very clean and has a satisfying sound. It lines up perfect and I didn't seem to have any backplay with this demo version. Let's go ahead and hear what it sounds like. Keeping things vintage, we have domed acrylic crystal with a cyclops eye for date magnification. One of the nice things about this material is that it is naturally pretty anti-reflective, and if you do get some minor scratches, they are easily removed with the polywatch that we saw earlier. If you are interested in learning how to remove scratches with polywatch, I will have a video link down below where I show you how I cleaned the Hesselite on my Omega Speedmaster. The finish on this stainless steel case is very nice with a satin brush vertical pattern on the top of the lugs connecting to a chamfered edge that leads into the high polished case side. The lugs are slightly curved downward and this will help the watch comfortably wrap the wrist as you will see later in the wrist shot. In addition, we have drilled lugs so changing out the bracelet will be a simple process. Flipping around back, things are left pretty basic, which is expected for a vintage inspired watch. For the Tipsim, you have a brush circle in the center, surrounded by a high polished ring that has text information about this specific piece. Looking closer in at the dial, we have an easy to read sword handset with circular markings at each hour indice. The 12 o'clock marking is unique as it's using the tips and symbol which fits in very nicely and the upper half matches the blue of the 200 meter marking. 
there is a date window at the 3 o'clock set behind the Cyclops eye magnifier, and if you look closely, you will notice that the numbers are a dark blue color set to a white background. Something I really enjoy about this dial is the way that the words Tipsim and Automatic as well as the Minute Tracker have been executed. These parts are not just painted or stamped, but they are actually gilted into the dial, causing it to have a much different reaction. There are moments when it is very prominent and then others where it tends to blend into the black of the dial, all depending on the lighting. Powering this piece is the Salida SW300-1. It's a 26 joule movement that vibrates at 28,800 beats per hour and has a power reserve of 42 hours. This is a chronometer grade movement, but it is not yet certified. This tapered 5-link stainless steel bracelet has a combination of brushed and polished links that are riveted together. The clasp has high polished edges and a satin brush center that features the company logo. A double push button release will expose the milled parts, and we have three micro adjustments to help achieve a comfortable fit. Tipson created their own loom, which is an exclusive compound developed with RC TriTech, the makers of Superluminova. It is generously applied to the hands, indices, and bezel markings. In my experiences with the piece, the loom is excellent and stays bright for a very long time. I also want to mention that this specific loom is meant to develop its own patina over time. And here is a side-by-side -side shot next to an American Quarter to give you a better representation of the scale. And here's a shot on my 6.75 inch wrist. With that 47.5 measurement of those curved down lugs, you can see it is an absolutely beautiful fit on my wrist. I do not believe many people would have any complaints about the measurements of this piece as it is a pretty universal size. But let's go ahead and take a look at the outdoor shot so I can show you that natural light reflection. All right, that is going to wrap up this review of the Tipsim 200M. I want to say thanks again to Matt for sending this piece my way. I always love getting a chance to look at these passion projects and be able to experience the love and artistry that goes into each piece. I hope you as a viewer enjoyed watching this video. I appreciate your time and I will see you in the next one.